Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create dynamic drop-down lists using data validation. Now drop-down lists in Excel are a really helpful feature because it essentially allows you to have some kind of control over the information that's going into your spreadsheet. For example, if you look on the screen here, I have a very basic client invoices log. So this is somewhere where I might come to enter in any invoices. So I have the invoice number in column A, I have the invoice date, I then need to enter the client, the amount, the VAT, and then finally the total. And it might be that it's not only me inputting invoices into this log, this might be a worksheet that's been shared amongst other colleagues or other people and everybody enters in their invoices. So it's super imperative that the information going into this spreadsheet is accurate and correct each and every time. So if I was entering in a client name into here, I could come in and I could start to type it, we'll say company A. But then if somebody else comes to this spreadsheet, maybe they want to type in company A, but they make a spelling error. Maybe they accidentally do two O's or something along those lines. And before we know it, we have errors in our spreadsheet. So a really great way of ensuring that the integrity of your spreadsheet is maintained and ensuring that the correct information is going in every single time is to create a drop down list that anyone who's using this spreadsheet can then select the client from. And that is what I'm going to show you in this tutorial video. So we're kind of doing two things here. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a data validation drop down list, which is fairly straightforward. But the magic thing that we're doing is that we're going to make it dynamic. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. Now, the way that I like to do this is I like to have essentially a master list of all of my clients. And I have that kept on this client's worksheet. So this is where I'm going to enter in all of my clients. And then if I get new clients, I can simply come and add them onto the end of this list. And what we're trying to achieve here is that I want to essentially have all of these clients in a drop down list so that when I want to input one of them, I can click in cell C4. I'm going to get a little drop down arrow and it's going to drop down and show me all of the clients and I can select which one I want to use. So that's the aim of the drop down list. Now, the dynamic part comes in when we are adding more clients to this list. So if I add another client to the bottom here, essentially what I want to happen is that my drop down list will automatically update to include my new client without me having to really do anything. And that's kind of what makes this process dynamic. So let's take a look at the steps that we need to take in order to achieve our end result. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to put your items, in this case, my clients in a table. Currently, my data here, which you can see in column A, isn't in any kind of table. So I'm going to press Control A to highlight all. I'm going to go up to my home ribbon and in the styles group, I'm going to click format as table and you can select any one of these. I'm going to choose this one. It's asking me where is my data. I can see by my marching ants around the outside that it's selected the correct data range. And it's also picked up that my table does in fact have a heading. So I'm happy with those settings and I'm going to click on OK. And that data is now in a table and I can tell it's in a table because it's given me a little filter button in the heading just there. And also I can now see that I have access to the table design ribbon at the top of the screen with all of my options on it for formatting and customizing this table. So that's step one, put that data in a table. And what you're also going to want to do is you're going to want to name your table in this table name box at the top here. Currently it says table two. I always like to name my tables and my ranges so that they're more meaningful and easy to recognize. So I'm going to say client list. Always worth remembering when you are naming tables or ranges, you can't have any spaces. So I couldn't have client space list. That's not going to work. It has to be one word or separated with an underscore. And always remember to hit enter. So essentially I have my data in a table and I've named that table client list. Now what I need to do is I need to tell Excel where in this table 
the data that I want to use in the drop down list is located. Now for me, this is fairly simple. I have a one column table. It might be that in your data, you have three, four, five, or maybe even more columns in your table. And so you will need to choose which column or which cell range contains the data that you want to appear in that drop down list. Now, as I said, for me, this is fairly straightforward. I want company A to company J to appear in my drop down list. So I'm going to highlight them. And then I need to name the range. So this is slightly different from naming a table. I'm now naming a range of cells. And we do that from this name box just above. So I'm going to click in here and I'm going to call this range of cells companies and hit enter. So now essentially I have my client list table that contains my company's named range. So those are two really important steps that you must do in order for your drop down list to be dynamic. Now that we've done that, we can jump back to our invoices spreadsheet and this is where we can set up the drop down list. And we do this using data validation. So if we jump up to the data ribbon and in the data tools group, you have an option in there for data validation. And there's lots of different types of data validation that you can apply to your spreadsheet. But in this particular instance, we want a drop down list. So I'm going to select list as the validation criteria. It's now asking me for the source. So it's saying, OK, I'm going to create a drop down list. What do you want me to put in that drop down list? Now, what I want to show in there is basically that cell range that we named. And if you remember, we called that cell range companies. So in source, I'm going to type in the equal sign. Now I can remember what I've called it. I called it companies. But if you couldn't remember, if you press the F3 key on your keyboard, Excel will pop up this helpful little paste name dialog box. And this will essentially show you any named ranges that you have within your workbook. And I only have the one and it's the one I'm looking for companies and I'm going to click on OK. So that's what we want as our source equals companies equals that cell range. And I'm going to click on OK. And what you'll now see is that next to cell C4, I have this little drop down arrow and contained within there are all of the companies in that cell range that I selected as my source. So it makes it a lot easier for anybody who's inputting clients into this spreadsheet to come through. They can select the client and it's going to input into the spreadsheet exactly the same every single time, dramatically reducing any chance of errors or mistakes. So that all looks good. Let's take a look at the dynamic part in action. So I'm going to jump back to my clients list. And let's pretend it's a new month and I've got a new client that I want to log some invoices for. So I'm going to add my new client onto the bottom here. I'm going to say company K. I'm going to hit enter. Now what you'll see is that because we put this in a table, tables will automatically expand to accommodate any new entries. And that is why this method of creating a dynamic drop down works. OK, so it's very important that you don't miss out those two steps at the beginning of creating a table and also creating a named range. So company K is now part of this data source. And if I jump back to invoices, I haven't had to do anything but my new company is now included at the bottom there. So it really takes all of the hassle out of it. Now, if we hadn't put our clients in a table and named the range, every time we added a new company onto the bottom here, it wouldn't update in this drop down. We would have to essentially go in and edit our data validation and reselect the source cell range, which would be over here, to include the new company. So I think you can agree it's definitely a lot easier just to take that time at the beginning to create a table, name the range and then link directly to the range. And that is it. That is very quickly and simply how you create a dynamic drop down list using data validation. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in the next tutorial. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there 
To see more videos from Simon Says It.